No. I hit the go live button, so. Okay. There. Now we might be live. Okay. Awesome. Well, they're talking 2020 rules article two, so. Um, let's see if I can. Yeah, there we go. We're live. Share. Oh gosh. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to share it. <laughs> Share it to a group. All right. All right. So I'm sharing. We are live. I'm not watching the video. Well, good evening, Alex. Good evening, Dan. Man, this is a exciting couple days, is it not? This is crazy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> today, today hit a little bit harder than yesterday. I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah, maybe. I don't think so, but that's why I have the graphic up. This isn't going to be a big, um, it, it isn't going to be a big presentation. I literally only made one slide this time, and that is R-E-L-A-X. As Aaron Rodgers said a couple years ago, R-E-L-A-X, relax. That's how yeah. I feel about it. But let's give a let's give it just a little bit of time for some more people to hop on right now. We've got we only got one person watching. Two. We're up to two. But it takes a little bit for people to Yeah. See that we're going we some, on here. We got some questions and stuff tonight too. Yeah. Yeah, I made I wanted to see if um you know, some people can't catch the live the um the live show, if you will. So I figured, see if there's any questions people want to ask while they uh, while they go about their business. Because 7 p.m., a lot of people are getting off work on the West Coast or going to get off work here soon. So I've learned yeah. 7 p.m. is just not a good time. 7 p.m. Eastern is just not a good time for some people. We try to do our, our Rock Online winter maps, and we're just not seeing a lot of people because they get off later. So I'm having to... Gonna have to move some yeah, a little bit a, later. Yeah, I think a lot of people are, you know, not at home like they were this past year too. Now everybody might be having to go back to the office and stuff. Some people. Yeah, definitely. All right. So yeah, so there wasn't there wasn't a lot to like unpack today, right? Today was pretty much like I don't know. You want you just frame up frame up what we heard today, Alex? Okay, so what we heard today was now it it they phrased it and I'll I'll move the article over here so people could see they phrased it as if it was like a rules change but it really isn't a rules change you even mentioned that here while this isn't a change to the rules it's a meaningful change to the design of hero clicks that we know people uh, players will notice and this has been an ongoing trend for them the past you know we get the design insight articles uh, every so often and we got the one not too long ago where they're talking about cross set and intra set type devices you know this type of mechanic will be across multiple sets and then there's some that might just be only in the set so they're really trying to be a little bit more um transparent with how they design things or at least explain and that's probably because people are going to complain otherwise um if you just don't yeah. explain why something's happening so the point of this rules article is that they are quote unquote benching powers. Um, they say you know that there's 48 standard powers. That's a lot. And while they're they already mentioned they're trimming some down, the willpower and the colossal stamina and whatnot. They decided what they're going to do, starting with the Wonder Woman 80th anniversary, is that they are actually going to just remove certain powers remove as in just not put them on dials for this set that doesn't mean they're out of the game that doesn't mean uh they're not in the pack like they're just gone from the game forever they're literally just saying hey in this set we are not going to give any figures these powers um and the powers listed that they said they weren't going to do is leap climb super strength willpower earthbound neutralized Precision Strike, Pulse Wave, Battle Fury, Range Combat Expert, Perplex, 
Shape Change, Invincible, Force Blast, Hypersonic Speed, and Support. That's a lot of powers. Um, right. But the key thing to, th to see is that these powers will still be on the, the Powers and Abilities card. They'll still be in the, the rule book. Or they aren't typically in the rule book, but they'll, they'll be... They're still in the rules. They're not going away. They're not suddenly like, hey, we, we've ditched all these powers. Just deal with it. It just means for this set and maybe the following set, they're just not going to build... They're not going to design their figures to have those. And that's really all this article was about. It was basically detailing, hey... And this this might not be the end of it. They might say, hey, for Wonder Woman, we're doing this set, and then the next set we're going to do these powers were taken out you know this might be just something they're trying to experiment with but they wanted to emphasize that this is a design change a design plan not a rules change so that doesn't mean all your older figures no longer can use any of these abilities these abilities all exist now they could change them down the road they even hinted that with leap climb there's a good chance leap climb comes back in a slightly more powerful form but for now it's taking a break so they might be also utilizing this chance to see how things work without these powers and then when they bring them back in use that as a way to revise them because some of these powers are right. just you know could use some revising leap climb super strength definitely well, I think, need some so i think i think the way that i see it alex is that they're going to re the the pack is going to have the revised powers and so so uh, th that so maybe that i think my take on it is is that i don't know this maybe that, that the revised pack is going to have or the new pack is going to have the revised powers right right so we're, go we're going to see the new willpower on there we're going to see changes to leap climb whatever right um in that pack but we're they're going to I think see if it makes any older figures kind of come up and play mm -hmm. um, as they're designing new figures as well. Um, so, yeah. so so does the change to leap climb make some Hulk way better than it should have been, right? And then how do they use that in the desired design of new figures uh, going forward? And everybody um, who's watching, if you want to type in your questions, I do see we have some questions, but I figure me and Daniel give our opinions and talk about this a little bit and then answer some questions kind of like we do in the regular episodes um so i'm not yeah. ignoring your questions we'll get to them here in just a second um i do want to preface before we keep talking to reiterate we are not um whiz kids hero clicks apologists so don't think that we're here to just blindly defend whiz kids and the hero clicks claim a game in general uh we are going to be critical about them if need be yes but i so for, you go first dan i i have a a soapbox thing to talk about after this oh i do i do too right i mean you could go first so, yeah okay that's fine i'm i'm sorry i'm i'm like ready to pop off so go for it um so like here's the thing right they said that they were going to bench powers at some point right mm-hmm Here's and the uh, and here's the problem that I see that is justified with a lot of folks, right? We get one DC set a year, mm -hmm. and like, you know, you know, Sam is a huge fan of Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. and I think the list of powers that they are benching for Wonder Woman is very rough for collectors and players. Yep. Yeah, I could see And that. I I mean I could go through right like I mean people that I know very close, right? I don't know that are friends, right? And you know like uh so I I mean like lead climb super strength and, and that I can get, but like willpower that that leads me to believe, okay, and these are not facts, right? This is just my belief. That willpower means we get no quintessence, and then we get no giants or colossals in the set or anything that might be able to shape shift like our size shift, like an, I don't know, like an atom smasher or something, right? Mm -hmm. um, precision strike, right? You kind of expect that on some low point DC characters like the generics and 
like maybe some of like the ninjas or an Amazon warrior type person. Um, you know, a, a, a pulse wave is very indicative of how like Shazam works down dial. Yeah. Um, you know, battle fury is what I would expect from like a very angry wonder woman, a very powerful wonder woman. Like I would expect to see a very powerful wonder woman in this set. And I think battle fury somewhere on her dial would be indicative to me of a very powerful wonder woman. Um, perplex um that's a huge one yeah right that's kind of, that's kind of one of your basics right and so that means that at least from a meta perspective i don't see a lot of uh, i don't see a low point perplexer coming into play um you know or you know somebody that plus two perplexes you know we've gotten a lot of that stuff in the past few sets um so shape change Right. Like I expect, you know, Wonder Woman is uh, I don't want to say it. she's in like the mystic arts or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Or like uh, or, or her lore. I'm not a comic book expert here, but her lore has a lot of mysticism involved. Right. Um, and so I would expect like maybe some of her enemies to have shape change and that sort of thing. Um, you know, Invincible is the best defensive power in the game. True. I think the the, the best reducer, and to see its inclusion means that like there's not going to be a, like a beat stick Superman in the set or like something like that. Um, and then of course hypersonic speed is a huge one. Um, you know you expect Wonder Woman to be able to run in, run out. Uh, a Superman that is most likely to be included in the set to be able to run in, run out. Um, and then you know support. Um, you know, that's very, a lot of Wonder Womans have had support, um, you know, again, with the Mystic Arts type stuff, right? We've seen some really good support, yellow power support pieces come out of um, DC sets uh, in the past. Um, so you're talking about like a long line of design expectations right. that are... Uh, that are thrown up in the air and that's very unsettling to a lot of people. And I, I, I have friends that are, have their favorite characters are a lot of the wonder woman lore, the D the, you know, the wonder woman, the Shazam, the Superman. Um, I mean, that's, you know, Sam, Jeremy and Lane. Right. And, right. you know, they see a lot of this stuff not going to be included in the one DC set we get a year. And, that's a hard pill to swallow, right? So, you know, the things that they're going to include, since they're not including those powers, they did say that they're going to include some other stuff, which we can talk about. Uh, and, I, and I'll let you talk about that here in a second. But those things have got to be, have got to feel great. Yeah, I agree. They have got, they've got to feel great. The, the, the stat bumps, you know, the dial length, whatever the combos the keywords that has got to feel awesome yeah i agree i completely agree so let me before i get on my soapbox because i'm going to take a more optimistic approach to this um let me ask you something dan what was your what was the situation where you played your first hero clicks event like you first game uh, of hero, not event. First game of hero clicks. Where was it? Like what kind of was uh, it I mean, an event or what was it? No, I mean like mine was at my house because I had someone. I, one of my friends worked at the comic book store, and I asked him to come over and help me learn the game. Mm -hmm. But I would say my my first, you know, and I'm probably not a great example for this analogy <laughs> though, Alex. Because I started learning, uh, I played my first sealed event was the Flash set, mm -hmm. um, and then my first competitive event was so that was in like September. My first competitive event was March of the next year. Okay. Um, so I hit the books hard. I hit the rules forums hard, um, you know, and uh, I used this quite a bit to learn the to learn the rules and learn the strategies and learn the tactics. Okay. 
So uh, the reason I ask that is because I'm going to explain my theory of what exactly is the thought process behind this, why they're doing it, and what their ultimate plan is. Now this is in, isn't any insider knowledge, this is just my hypothesis, what I think is happening. So we are under the impression that usually uh, set design is about a year and a half off, right? So it takes about a year and a half to two years from when they decide on a, a set, talk it with the different licenses, go through everything, all the design. It takes about a year and a half before it actually is ready to go. That's kind of the expectation, I think. It could be much less, but that's the expectation I think all of us have learned. Um, so if you think about this set coming out in um, May, late April, May, that puts us to around worlds of last year. Uh, well, I guess the year before. It's 2021 now. Are right, so, you talking about April or May? Right. If we're, if this set coming out you, in April, you a mean, year and a you half before... No, 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 no. A year and a half would have been October of 2019, oh. which is Worlds, when around when Worlds was yes, happening. Yes, 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 yes. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, yeah. So that is when WizKids, I think, or HeroClix was at a pretty good high. WizKids just had, held their own world tournament in their first, you know, private location in Memphis at, at a, uh, whatchamacallit, at, what you call it? Memphis. Like, yeah, what was the, Graceland, at Graceland. Great event. Yeah. But it wasn't re it wasn't necessarily bringing in a lot of new players. It was a high competitive event, so I could see being at that time to ignore what COVID happened because when this set was designed, I would assume COVID wasn't even on anyone's mind. It, this set was already planned. They were already planning for a rules change because they said back in 2017 and 2018, "Hey, we want to do this every couple of years." So we didn't get one in 2020. So 2021 was probably when they were thinking it. So. Things were riding high, so they didn't plan to, you know, I don't feel like they're reaching out trying to get new people because COVID hit and things are bad. I think all this was, hey, we're, we're maxing out, we're, we're doing a really high competitive scene, we're getting a lot of people involved in the competitive scene, but let's get more, let's get some new people involved so that way this can get even better, the product can get bigger, because all their other lines are getting bigger with D&D &D and their board games and whatnot, hey, let's, let's make this bigger and better. And as a new player, my first time ever playing this game was, and I've mentioned this before on the podcast, was Age of Ultron. I decided one day, hey, I want to get into a game. Magic was kind of not my thing. Um, and Pokemon, I was too old for it. Uh, so I was like, hey, Hero Clicks, that's neat. So I literally walked into a local store during an event because I found, I, I, I maybe went on Reddit and learned hey you need to check out the win and so i went on the win and said hey there's a local event and it was like month two of age of ultron and i sat down played a sealed event and i lost every single game because i could not understand i pulled a, a rare hercules which he was great and some other pieces but i just couldn't comprehend everything all at once it was just too intense for me too many powers too many things you know putting down tokens what is that pushing damage what's that so it was just way too much for me but i loved the sealed aspect of the game because sealed play while a lot of people don't think it's high competitive at times it is absolutely something that newer players all players generally enjoy one way or another because you go in you play and you leave with something Mm -hmm. Some competitive events you don't. You know, if you go in for a, an OP kit, well, maybe you, if you don't win fellowship, you don't leave with anything. You paid five bucks, and that could be a little disappointing at times. But sealed, you always go in. Generally, it's a new set. You sit down, you always leave with some figures, and you have a good day. Maybe you win the prize, but even if you didn't, it was a good time. Well, WizKids is generally right. Like, Hero Clicks is a fairly difficult game to just walk in, sit down, and play. And simplifying it like they came out with you know starter sets and they're like hey if you're new pick up the starter set learn the game okay well that's nice they came out with the avengers versus masters of evil battlegrounds thing which improved on that and sold well i haven't seen very many in any of the my local stores I, from my understanding it sold really well but there hasn't been a set that is good for beginners to allow them to have that sealed aspect, like going into the store, I could buy a booster and I could just understand everything in this booster. I could sit down with my buddy, hey man, 
let's get into this hero clicks game we could go buy two boosters of this wonder woman set we could sit down it's not going to be too complicated for us and we can actually work this out or it or just stores trying to promote new people to come in maybe at a local con or something like that it's really hard to say hey you ever heard of hero clicks well here's this really complicated set with all these objects and all these new all these rules and stuff sit down and let's play like i cuz i worked at a con a local con before trying to get people <laughs> to get into the game and it's hard to explain so I, I think the I think the problem that people are having with this is that, like you said, it's the first DC set of the year. We and to answer, um, uh, let's see who said it. Uh, Kiefer Kiefer Lamp. I don't know how to say it. Uh, what's the next set after Wonder Woman? We don't know any sets after Wonder Woman. Now, generally, Dan, you mentioned it before. We learn kind of in February, or is it Gamma that we usually learn more sets? Yeah, the uh, event that typically takes place in Vegas. Yeah, ga now Gamma this year is in March, mid-March. Um, so I, I feel like it's a little weird. We don't know any oh, sets. Sorry, it doesn't. Sorry, it doesn't happen in Vegas. It happens in Reno. It's the it's the event in Reno. Gotcha. So uh, we don't know any sets beyond Wonder Woman. Um, they mentioned in the article that their plan for benching is for a few months, and it might be we get Wonder Woman and. It'll be a few months before we get a new set. Could be that. So it might only be right. Wonder Woman that we have to deal with this. There's a lot of unknowns right. left. Um, right. So I think, and I think Alex, you know, a lot of people are going to point back with, with with this point, and I agree with it. Right. I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, you know, the 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 rebuttal to that is, and I'm not a marketing genius, right? Is that WizKids, a lot of folks feel like WizKids doesn't do enough marketing. Um, now, we, we, exi we uh, as the podcast here and Clicks Off, we, we work with WizKids marketing, right? We do our unboxings when we get them. We do our previews when we get them. You know, we, we blast out, you know, tweets and Reddits and all, all over Facebook, everything that we get. Um, but you know, a lot of folks don't see that in store. Um, right. you know, there's not a lot of in store advertising materials. Um, so it's, it's all a lot of player driven, um, marketing and advertising. Right. And, you know, we've had the quick start kits, you know, we gave those out to a few new players. Oh, that was a really big help. At least in, at, at our store, we gave those out. Um, you know, we had those up for new players uh, that worked really well, you know, and I think the battlegrounds thing works really well as a good guys versus bad guys team up and really explains how the scenarios work and all that kind of stuff, but it needs to be able to be marketed, right? They've got the product, you know, if you've got the wonder woman set, right, what's their, what's their plan to kind of blast out this wonder woman set you know, is a great starting point for new players going forward. Um, you know, what's what's the marketing strategy for that at the like at the kind of the friendly local game store level? So I could give a little bit of insight to that being a having somewhat of a marketing public relations type background. So that's why I guess I feel a little bit more optimistic with this because I can see what angles they're trying to go with. Because like like you said, there was the quick start kit we had before. There was the mentor kits or OP things they did a while ago where they had like Oak, old Con uh, Connelly's sidekick night. That's what it was. Remember they had sidekick night that they had stores do where they, they gave Connelly's to the store to give out to new people to help with like bringing in new people. And that was somewhat successful. Um, then they started like, pumping out more starter sets with some stuff and then doing the the battlegrounds trying to find new ways to get new people in because WizKids is I feel severely limited on what they can do compared to everything else that we see like Magic the Gathering the biggest game in the world right well they have so many different avenues they have the online game they have all these different marketing like books they have board games based off of the characters they have all these different avenues and even then you don't see a ton of marketing for magic the gathering 
WizKids is really yeah. limited with hero clicks, like you said, with local stores. Um, part of that also might be is they can't just promote the game as much because of maybe there's some licensing issues there. Because there are other Marvel games like Crisis Protocol that maybe they can't advertise hero clicks sure. as much because there's a com you know a conflict of interest because Crisis Protocol is a different miniatures type game, a much bigger miniatures, but. So I, I think they have to be creative on how they can be marketing this out to the open. Um, and Jay Sanzen mentions that uh, Wizkids doesn't interact with us on social media, but Magic is available in Walmart. And that's another thing. Now remember, Wiz, HeroClix does go to Target sometimes, but we generally don't yeah. like it when they're at those stores, right? We don't like hero clicks at mass market like we do for the game well, purposes but we don't like it when certain figures are at the mass market well so yeah so and hero clicks has been and magic experiences this problem as well um because i i see this at the stores uh hero clicks was sold at walmart it was sold at toys r us you know it is still occasionally sold at target um but there's also a uh a security risk with that, a profit issue with that, right? Um, you know, magic is often like in sealed packs that are hard to cut open and and steal. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I get the mass market um, distribution issues and how that can uh, hit the bottom line of a company, right? Because those that returned material that destroyed material that stolen material oftentimes goes back to the distributor mm -hmm. and thus the manufacturer so i understand the barriers to entry there um but you know maybe there's an, another cre maybe there's a creative poster that they can make i, I don't know right like um, and they used to have those they used to have those cool posters that showed like age of ultron and it showed some of the figures or something like they had that stuff i had I, I don't know if I have it anymore, but I had some of those posters that they had up in game well, stores. Yeah, I know what I'm talking but... about, like, maybe not specific, right? But, like, you know, just marketing WizKids and Hero Clicks and, um, hey, we have a superhero, we play, have a superhero miniatures game. It's the most popular selling miniatures game, right? Yeah. Um, you know, just, just something to put on the shelf, right, or put on the wall. It doesn't have to be huge, right? Those Age of Ultron posters and stuff were ginormous, right? But just a reasonably sized poster that advertises their section in the store, I, I think, would be would be helpful um, and as well. Now, the social media thing they they you know they do interact with people on social media um, if you're friendly, yeah. Um, now I don't I don't know how magic interacts with people. I've never done that before, um, but um, I've gotten plenty of responses uh, from WizKids social media. Even you know, and it, that was prior to me being a part of Team Clickstaff. Um, you know, it's when I first started, right? I and even very early into being in Clickstaff in 2016 or so. You know, they, they resolved issues I had with the Punisher van. They answered my questions on, you know, DMs, um, you know, but they're, they're a company that you want to approach very friendly, very professionally, very, very succinct, very professionally, you know, very to the point. Um, so that's been my experience and I've had great success approaching them in a, in that manner right very professionally very to the point very succinct yeah and now keep in mind that's not to say that they don't have any plans to do some additional marketing because this set is still four months three months away four to three months away right and so it's hard to market something when you don't like it's hard to market a game to new players when it's not really new player accessible so to me, this feels like, hey, this is the first step that they're taking to be like, all right, we're going to take a major set and say, hey, this is going to be more user friendly. So that way we can promote the hell out of this set and say, hey, you're interested in here. Check out this new game with all the, uh, you know, this, well, not new game, but check out this fun superhero miniatures game. It's a, you know, here's the new rule, new rules. It's a beginner set or something. You know, it's something that will allow us 
allow new players to approach a game a lot easier and they don't have to have um you know a, a seasoned veteran explain the games and they don't have to go to the the rules forum to figure out everything about what's in their booster how to play it appropriately so um and jeremy uh, jeremy mentions i don't think i would define wonder woman as a major set well it, major set being a 10 booster brick set is what i mean by a major set and so i i i'm taking the wait and see approach like the slide says R-E-L-A-X, relax. I really don't think... One, I don't think the whole benching powers thing is going to last more than maybe two sets. Um, I think they want to make a set or two that could last. Like, they can maybe order a lot more of this general set and say, hey, we have a beginner DC and maybe a beginner Marvel set for new players. When we go to conventions... We could present this to, you know, people walking around and be able to, you know, when the conventions are back, and be able to introduce to all the people walking around to be able to introduce it like that. Because I'm sure they were seeing these at Origins and whatnot, trying to explain Heroclix to people. And they're like, nah, man, I'm going to go play this other game because this other game is way less convoluted than this. But now they'll yeah. be able to say, here's Wonder Woman, You're, here's the cards, let's explain this really simple to you. The, the problem, I think, with this is that people went into it getting pumped about Wonder Woman, seeing the objects, uh, which we can also talk about, because uh, we do have a few questions about those. Went into it thinking, Wonder Woman, it's our DC set, I'm going to pre-order it, I'm ready, but it doesn't feel like it's going to be a set for a lot of meta play. But, all that being said, they said they aren't doing the standard powers listed, but that doesn't mean they're not introducing traits or special powers that kind of do what that does so like invincible for example wouldn't surprise me if we got some wonder womans that said could reduce penetrating damage like i i expect to see that maybe some of the other precision maybe not precision strike but probably not pulse wave but some of the other abilities i feel like they'll have some creative ways because they mentioned before they're making the commons and uncommons fairly simple and then the higher rarities are going to make them more complex well, they can make them more complex with special powers and traits without having to have the, the standard powers listed there. They could just kind of make it a trait that says reduce penetrating or, you know, give the willpower or whatever. So I, I think before, at first glance, one, be thankful that they're not saying they're removing it forever. Because <laughs> that could you imagine if it was gone forever? Yeah, that would be a much different discussion. Yes, a much different discussion. So let's uh, let's answer a few questions that we've got. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm I'm pretty much off my soapbox, Alex. You know, I mean, we can answer some questions. Um, you know, I, I I certainly understand the change, understand the why. Um, again, I'm I'm going to keep playing. Right, none of this stuff makes me want to stop playing. I just certainly feel for the collectors and the folks that are very passionate about DC and how they're feeling today. So, um, you know, my heart goes out to y'all as a, as a collector and a fellow player. So, uh, let's, let's hope that, uh, everything gets made up for with, uh, if it should be an 11 attack, I want to see a 13 attack. If it should be a four damage, I want to see a six. Right. And it's the five. And, and they mentioned right, in the I, article something similar to that about how just perplex right. you would just choose perplex over anybody that had the ability to kind of pseudo perplex because perplex is just so flexible. So I see a I foresee a lot of that happening where maybe you have someone that like boosts combat values to all Amazon keywords or plus one right. attack or something like that where they work the pieces work together really really well. And they make it where you have to play pieces that work really well as opposed to playing a, a 30 point perplex and, and being like, wow, that's more flexible. So I'm going to play that instead. They're, I could see them. They Sorry. have the capabilities to make it where they work together a bit more. And it could still be an interesting set, I feel like. No, I'm with you. And, and I agree. Right. But I'm just talking about they're they're talking about the you know, the combat values, the dial link, the keyword, and the combos, right? So the mm -hmm. combos have got to be on point, right? Right. Those other figures that they combo with have to be playable. 
But I'm just talking about those base combat stats, right? Like, if Wonder Woman doesn't have Invincible, you know, I kind of expect to see a 19. If Wonder <laughs> Woman do, if Wonder Woman would normally be 11-4, I want to see a 13-5, 12-6, right? I, w- I want to be wowed with the combat values. So that's, that's my hope for the set, and I think that'll make a lot of people... Uh, It'll make it a little bit easier pill to swallow to, for her to not have hypersonic or something like that. Right. And keep in mind, Super Senses is now way stronger um, as a power because you no longer have Pulse Wave or Precision Strike to get through it. Because you no longer have... So, it's a... That's it, right. It's just a straight, straight roll now. So, um, all right. So some of these questions we got. Let me hit up the, the chat first. Raphael Souza. Sorry if I mispronounce any of your names. Hey guys, what are the chances, in your opinion, that they reset the modern to be like from Wonder Woman set and on? We kind of talked about this yesterday. I, I, I see this as literally just kind of a one-off set. Maybe they add a Marvel set to do something similar. Th- I don't believe this is the status quo going forward. I think this is literally, hey, we want something that's more approachable to new people. So sure, we're going to have to sacrifice one of the sets a year. And I can see the, them doing this going forward. We sacrifice one of the six or seven sets a year to be a beginner set. One that's friendly to new people. There's going to be a handful of pieces maybe the, the more competitive people like. But it generally, it's for new people. Like To me, marketing-wise, that sounds great. Because now I can maybe order more of this set and it be the year-long set that you know stores can order to help promote the game and introduce new players to the game easily. And so I, I don't think they're going to reset the modern and say, hey, we're just going to have these uh, you know, powers disappear for a while and new powers come in. I think it's, I think this is a one-off, maybe two-off. What do you think, Dan? Uh, I, I think so, right? Um, and hopefully this means that maybe we get another DC set this year, right? That's, that's all out. Yeah, I, it wouldn't surprise me because DC obviously had to be on board with this idea, which of course they probably are because they're like, hey, more people to the game, that means that's better for us too. So um, it wouldn't surprise me if we got a late fall DC set because we used to get two at times, um, but yeah, that wouldn't surprise me if we're, they're using this as a jumping off point and then coming back in the fall with some normal sets if you will jason davis says my question would be has there been some sort of corporate or direction shake up with the company um not that i'm aware of um i believe i mean they haven't announced any that i know of of like a vp or someone changing positions yeah, yeah. i mean not that i know of i mean and you know uh, no not that i know of i mean you know me and you we we don't get to know anything but you know, we we know people that would probably tell us that stuff, right, or make that announcement on Facebook. And right, no, I mean, no, not really, right? Um, let's. I see mean, I else. added, I added, added a lot of the popular WizKids folks that you see at cons. I have them on LinkedIn. None of them have changed jobs. Um, let's see. Let me keep going down the list. Uh, let's see, they're talking about that. Do you, um, sorry, I scrolled down and I missed the part. Uh, bench powers, but keep... Uh, David Herberger says, bench powers, but keep objects that add power. So I didn't talk about the objects. This actually makes a whole bunch of sense to me now, why we're getting more objects. Because we talked about this yesterday during the live thing, or we also talked about it maybe during the, the last episode. Um, the un, the not released episode yet. Um, there's a lot of special objects and equipment in the game, like a ton. And sure, we're gonna lo- some are gonna rotate, but we still have a lot in the game. And we're getting some. In f- are we getting some in Future Foundation? I don't th- think so. Or are we? Uh, no. Yeah, they, that was in the pictures that we got. Yeah. So Future Foundation, we're getting more, and then Wonder Woman, we're getting more. So to me, it makes sense. For the ones of Wonder Woman to, don't groan, also be beginner 
introducing equipment to introduce the idea of hey this is something you can equip to your character and they'd be more basic where maybe it's like this gives you poison or this gives you mind control or you know more basic items that maybe we can use because maybe they'll be cheaper you know maybe it's like a three-point object or a, a five-point object that gives something that we couldn't get before so I, I'm under the impression now that I, I my opinion is, is this set's going to be a beginner set I think the objects are going to tailor to that to where they're not super convoluted or they might just to appease us the competitive players but I, I feel like they're going to use these objects as a way to introduce this mechanic a major mechanic a set crossing mechanic to new players that's what I think but sure especially because we're, we're just getting some in future foundation so it's like we're gonna have object overload at some point um going back and i'm sorry guys I, i'm i'm catching back up this is 23 minutes ago uh don't you think that drastically changing the game will affect meta and competitive game the meta and competitive game I, I, yeah. go ahead dan you go first i've been going first every time so no 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 you're fine i i'm just agreeing with you here i mean you know we're trying to keep this to an hour tonight so um, no, I it, it will right. I mean the you know, it, I think it drives up the value of older stuff. I mean we can't really say a lot until we get some previews for the Wonder Woman set. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, if I was at uh, buy sell hold, um, I would say eh, if you plan on thinking about maybe playing later this year, right? Let's you know take a look through some of those those tier lists that we've made and look at some of the competitive pieces that are maybe a little cheaper some of that fringe stuff right uh acm mentioned uh the aav modoc yesterday yep um you know so i went out and uh, i bought a uh, second modoc right <laughs> um you know he's, he's pretty cheap right i got him for 10 bucks right i already had one i bought a second one for 10. i mean that's not an example i'm not going to rush out and spend hundreds of dollars here right but you know yeah, this, isn't, a, this isn't gamestop stock so right yeah yeah exactly you know but uh you know i'm i'm kind of paying attention here the next few days on these articles you know what older figures that are that are likely to survive the unknown rotation this year um that might go up from fringe to playable maybe get a little stock of them up right you know just mm -hmm. The, uh, the little $10 super rare that you might want to duplicate of, the the rare that you might need three or four of, right. um, you know, things like that, you know. So um, that that's how I think it'll affect the competitive game, and that's how I'm prepping for it um, going forward. Mark Morris says, if the goal is for this to be short-term and targeted at new players... Why not make a more expanded starter set price to entice new players? I think it's unrealistic to expect new players to just start with Wonder Woman and paying the prices for a Bricker case. Um, so keep in mind, the people who buy a Bricker case are competitive players and collectors. Like the people that just generally like hero clicks, they generally just split a brick with a person. Um, I rare, I maybe buy a brick. But that's because I'm a more higher comparative player. Dan, you buy like a bajillion cases, so right, we're usually right. We're we're like a, usually a three case purchase per set. Right, but for uh, but no, I, I think I think what um, maybe what the answer I have there would be they want to be able to make the game more impulse buy friendly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is what they're showing us, right? Yesterday we talked about how the game is more needs to be on the board game shelf. Um, right. so it's there, it needs to be there, but they also need to be able to attract people in on the impulse buy side of things too, I think. Yeah. Right. Or maybe once they go, maybe once they go to the board game shelf, see the, see the, you know, the, whatever it's called, the Wonder Woman scenario set, right? They go and be like, Hey, you got any, anything to go with this? And they're like, yeah, we got these packs here of Wonder Woman. You know, that you can buy figures that'll go with your scenario set. Yeah, and they could bring them to, you know, stores can bring them to cons. They could bring them to, because we're expecting that to ha start happening this fall again. But you keep in mind, and I mentioned cons because remember, this was probably planned before COVID happened. So they this is all planned as if everything goes back to normal. But 
you know, it, like you said, it impulse buy, the impulse is strong. And for newer players, introducing them to the game, be like, hey, look, we got this. You Check out Hero Clicks. It's a really cool game. Let me explain. Here's some figures I have. You know what? Boosters are $15, $14, which isn't that expensive with some of the other games out there to get into. Um, you could pick up two boosters and you could make a 300 point team really easy and it'd be fairly competitive um, for our events locally. Probably not on the grand scheme of how it's going to turn out. So I think bricks and cases, that's really for people really into the game. For newer players or trying to entice newer players, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, I think it's just getting them to buy boosters and explaining, you know, it's, you could buy a booster, here's a rules book, you know, you, you know, people love, I mean, people love gambling, like just in general, everybody does. Right. Gotcha yeah, gaming, GameStop, gotcha GameStop, gaming is, uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to say GameStop stocks. Yeah. Yeah. GameStop stocks. People are now getting to that to get their scratch that itch. Um, but like, like iPhone games, gotcha gaming, where you know, you got 20 coins, spin the thing and see if you get a five star. You know, all sorts of stuff. Like, people love that now. It's a million, million dollar business, like each game to do that. And that's what people do with Magic and Pokemon cards. You know how Pokemon cards have gone insane lately because people just want to buy a booster and get that ultra foil rare DX version. And Hero Clicks right. has always been that way too with chases and whatnot, but for people getting into the game, buying just a starter set or buying just the battlegrounds isn't as exciting. If I want to get into the game, but maybe I'm just not ready to get well, you know, hey, check out this cool flash set or whatever. And it's very convoluted. I open up like I have no idea what's going on with this. That's not as enticing as a new player. So it gives new players the ability to to have that impulse buy, to get, be gambling a little bit, if you will, to get the cool, hey, look, Mom, I got a cool super rare, super rare Flash, or or, or whatever. Steve Trevor, you know, it, it, that's... I, I think that's the ultimate goal, because new players haven't had that. They could buy whatever set we have, and they can end up with... I mean, maybe they're happy with the rare Ragman, but... They could end up with a super rare and be like, okay, I don't understand how any of his powers work. It's a little too... Like, does right. he do a lot of damage? That's great. Uh, like my kids. They love people to do a lot of damage, a lot of attack, but they don't understand all those powers that they have. And I, I've i been slowly adding more, more wrinkles to the game for them in order for them to understand the game. Because you just can't sit them down sure. and be like, hey. Like, we did it without action tokens. I was like, hey... First time let's play, you can either move or you can attack and roll dice to do it. Just to introduce how they move and how they attack. And then slowly yeah. add more wrinkles. Here's defensive powers. Here's this. So Yeah, I mean I mean Theo's already known that he likes uh Groot and Yeni Mine together, so <laughs> we're, we're, we've been working on it the past eighteen months. Nineteen uh, so, months. Jer Jer yeah, Jeremy, I did make a ragman reference. Uh, Jeremy says, yeah, but you're also looking at four or five bucks for a pack of cards versus 15 bucks for a booster, 12 cards for five fi versus five figs. True, but you also have to keep in mind, you have to compare these figures to the cost of Dungeons & Dragons. Dungeons & Dragons are about 2 to $3 a figure. Sometimes they're on sale for $1.99, but for, um, for, hold on. I have yeah, one here. good... Yeah, for a good Dungeons and Dragons figure, it can be up to five dollars a piece. Or more. Yeah, so like this, this right here is uh, WizKids, just a little pack of skeletons. So if I wanted to get in Dungeons and Dragons, this would cost me about two bucks, three bucks at the store. Well, with Hero Clicks, you get one figure, five figures for fifteen. So that's that about equals the same thing, three dollars a figure. And these arguably look a little bit better than these because the D&D &D ones are unpainted. So I, I think cost-wise it makes sense. Sure, 15 is a high entry point. But I think that's why they're trying to make a more beginner set is because... And that's why they have graph feeds too. Graph feeds help with that. And maybe we'll get a beginner graph feed. I think they just want beginners and new players to be able to open that booster and get figures they can easily understand and just... 
go to the game and play or come to a sealed event, sit down and let's play. Um, so Mark, uh, Mark Moore says new players won't just be able to just impulse buy boosters though, right? No map, no pack, tokens, dice. Well, I'm talking about in conjunction with buying a starter pack. Because you buy the starter pack, you know, hey, let's get start, get you started. Here's a starter pack for 20 bucks, and buy two boosters of the cool new set or down the road, be like, hey, here's two or three sets. Do you want Marvel, DC? All right, here, here's the Marvel set. It's Iron Man. Here you go. And they can build around the starter set. Because starter set, you're just limited to what you have. And maybe they don't like the figures in that set or in that starter set. So I, I, I agree. They don't have a map or a pack. But I, I, there's nothing wrong with what they're planning to do with Wonder Woman. The problem we have is we're concerned about what does it mean for us. Does it mean it's our only DC set? Does that mean we only have like two or three sets the rest of the year? Like is this taking one of our competitive sets if they had come out and said hey this is our beginner set it works with normal WizKid stuff it's a normal thing it just has beginner stuff no one would have an issue with that if they also came out and said hey we've got another DC set lined up for the fall it's a you know Dark Knight I don't know I, I don't think anyone would have an issue if they had already announced what is happening the rest of the year and they came out and strictly said we are doing this for just new players this is gonna be I mean, they did say that, but, you know, don't worry. <laughs> We're not completely taking away all the wrinkles. This is more like a beginner-friendly set. Because I hope they do that yearly. I, I think that would yeah. be really good for the game to just have sets that they can regularly have for stores to buy to be like, hey, new players, just always have a, a brick of this in your store and just keep buying that. We'll keep them going all year round. We'll make sure we have them to keep going. Now, one of them probably not because it's a 80th anniversary. But like someone mentioned, I, I forgot the comment. Um, you know, having like a core set, like Magic has a core set. Having something yeah. similar to that. Uh, Kiefer Lamp says the last dis distribution was poor. Getting the lottery case was insane compared to people getting thirty dollars of super rares that didn't pull a chase. So. You gotta th keep, and sorry I'm answering all these questions, Dan, but uh, throw this last set out. Just throw it out. Don't worry about distribution with in general. I know that's hard to say, but you have to keep in mind this set was delayed twice for shipping issues. I think something, this is my own theory, something went wrong, I think, at the factory that also led to the shipping issues. Like, COVID had just threw everything out the window and that's why the set was delayed multiple times because they were having a hard time getting this the set ready and set in in the states to alliance and in a rush to get it on time they royally screwed up collation distribution whatever you want to call it um that's my theory with this um that's why do i'm like do we do we answer all the questions from the facebook group i'm about to, I'm, to i'm about to hit that now okay um so that that's my thought with this. I I, I think it's a one off. We'll see with Fantastic Four, Future Foundation. I think it's a one off. Um, Jeremy, real quick, ask reason why we haven't heard anything about other sets. Um, I think there's we we usually don't hear about a bunch of sets until February. I feel like we usually hear through, um, summer, and we just don't know about fall. Or we know about the whole year. It does feel a little bit weird this year. But I think COVID had a lot to do with that. Because they don't want to announce a bunch of sets. And maybe not be able to follow through. I think House of X bit them a little bit. Um, so right. so I, I wouldn't be concerned. It is a, it's something to th think about. Because we don't have any idea what's happening after May. And that's a little weird. But I don't think that means anything. I don't think there's like any underlying, hey, this is the last set they're doing for the year. I think it's just... Yeah, I mean, it, it's February and March, like we mentioned earlier. Yeah. All right, uh, let's hit up and talk a little bit about our Facebook questions. I asked if anyone had questions and couldn't chime in. Um, how well will Jeremy, uh, who's also in the chat, uh, mentioned how well will Wonder Woman sell after this announcement of powers being benched? Do you predict anything for the set will actually be viable in meta? How many future sets do we think will have powers benched? We kind of answered that uh, yep. for the most part. Um, I don't think... I think 
competitive players might be less excited about this set and maybe not buy as many cases, but anybody thinking about doing that should just wait for previews. There's no yeah, I mean, I, I think now. I think they're I don't think they're going to see a lot of their regular pre-orders until they start previewing uh, figures. Yeah, I agree. Um, and even still, stores might still just you know you cancel your pre-order. Well, I'm just going to keep ordering this break. Like, if you're going to can if you're a com- high competitive player and you're going to cancel your pre-order, please, please, for the love of the game, explain to your store why because yes. they might want to keep the pre-order for the store like so if you're like hey you know the set is more geared towards new players it's not for me I'm, I'm gonna buy singles explain that to your store and say listen it's not that i don't want the set i'm gonna buy singles but this is a good set for new players so that way your store has it on hand to sell for new players and like i'm gonna go to my local and explain hey this set Maybe we should buy an extra brick just to have on hand, so that way when we do our cons and whatnot, we have this for new players. Because, and I'm sure WizKids is gonna market this to stores a little bit better. I think, hopefully, uh, to emphasize that. So, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Morgan mentioned with constructs coming back, what power do you think the baseball glove will have now? Did I miss the constructs are going to be in the Wonder Woman set? So if you look at the solicits and whatnot for the set, um, on the side of the box, it actually lists lanterns and constructs, and they have a huh. tiny, they have a tiny little lantern behind a, a and a boxing glove like the old construct boxing glove next to Green Lantern. So that that is the objects. Some of the objects they're doing is lanterns and objects. Now not big lanterns, little lanterns. Is what the picture looked like. Um, hmm. I could see them doing most of the constructs, just giving basic standard powers. Like, yeah, I mean I, that's what they, that's what they did before, right? And right. I don't see any reason for them to deviate from that. I mean, it worked fine before. Was it? Baseball, it won't be. It base, won't be range combat expert. Was the baseball glove range combat expert? I thought it was close combat. Was it? Was it, that, was, it was close combat. I was being facetious with the uh, article that we got today. Oh yeah, yeah. The baseball glove. I mean, they they didn't say they were getting they were getting rid of RCE, not CCE. So yeah, I mean, if it was CCE again and it was you know the same cost as before to equip it, or it came on the lanterns automatically with the construct thing, like well they could switch out, you know, equips or something that would be cool. Um, most oh, of we'll see. Yeah, the most of the ones like you probably obviously won't get a shape shift, uh, shape change one, no support one. But I think they'll give basic powers. But who knows? I mean, I I saw lan- before this article, I saw lanterns and constructs, and I was excited. But now I, I, it's tempered my expectations a little bit. Yep. Uh, what power combos are you excited to see in Wonder Woman? Um, this this is from Richard McClure, Shay McClure. Uh, we talked a little bit about this, but I think you're going to get yeah. a lot of Amazon combos, maybe some Soldier with Steve. It really depends on how deep they go Wonder Woman or how deep they go more DC. Like, if they treat it like an expanded grav set that we got before with Wonder Woman, then, yeah, it's going to be a whole lot of Amazons, a whole lot of other stuff. But if they use this opportunity to sprinkle in a lot more of... Uh, and we've seen some of those pictures. The more outlier DC figures, <laughs> the characters that like exist in the Wonder Woman universe but aren't a major DC piece, if that makes sense. So I, I think they're going to be very creative in how their combos work because they can. They can add wrinkles to the game while still being simple in their standard powers. So I could see hope maybe a Wonder Woman and Steve combo of some sort or... A Wonder Woman and uh, yeah. what's her name, Etta, or what's yeah, the Etta Candy? Yeah, Etta Candy. Yeah, combo with that wouldn't surprise. I hope they learn from that graph feed because they had some good ideas in the graph feed, but wasn't very well executed. Um, yep. So I, I hope it. they learned from that. Uh, isn't isn't great psychic uh, penetrating? Wait, isn't great psychic blast will probably mean the majority of this set is unplayable. <laughs> that's a that is a good initial impression spencer yeah <laughs> that's probable uh just means you want that super senses and hope you roll out 
Uh, well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, Psychic Blast and Precision Strike still combo, right? So, um... Yep. I mean, that could mean that a lot of the set's unplayable. Now, if I it remember... Could. It, it could. They, going back and looking at this, I'm actually kind of shocked they didn't get rid of Energy Explosion. Because that's just a very... Maybe that's... Uh, maybe that we're maybe we're going to see that being worked over here in the next few days. I'm just thinking from like a confusing standpoint to new players. Energy explosion is one of those that is a decent amount of confusing, but we'll see. We'll see. Giordano says if they're going to start cycling through powers between sets, should Wizkids make some new ones? No. No. They should tailor fix some of their old ones, but goodness, no. We do not need new powers. We don't need new colors. Um, now, if they wanted to get rid of like a leap climb or a super strength and tailor it and name it something new, like just change it up, that's fine. But I don't know that the game needs new new powers. I, I don't know what new things they could do, to be honest. But I could be surprised. That's right. Uh, and then lastly, we got Ken uh, John ha- uh, Half uh, Halford. Can we remember how much? Quotes fun Wonder Woman 84 was. Surely Wonder Woman 80th can carry the torch, right? What was Wonder Woman uh, 84? Was that the movie that's one? The, that's, the, that's the movie that just came out that had a lot of mixed reviews. I, I haven't seen it. so I've actually um, skipped most of the DC movies. I mean, it was it was definitely polarizing. I personally, again, you know, this is probably a lot of my opinions on Hero Clicks apply here, but I love all superhero movies. I'm just glad that I can go watch a superhero movie in theaters. Yeah, I, I'll be excited with that. I'll be excited to finally start playing in person again. We mentioned this before. Uh, one last question we got before we end this. Mark Morris says, uh, your ideas make sense. It's not how I interpreted the announcement. I hope you're right. As a non-competitive player, I'm mostly worried about the precedent set by the thought process of reduce complexity equals take stuff out. I support decreasing the threshold of entry, but not at the cost of the game fundamentals. How many sets will need to be modeled like Wonder Woman with certain powers being benched in a constant rotation before you become alarmed? I don't think they could do a different rotation. Like they're they've taken out like a majority of the more difficult powers. I don't know what another rotation would be where they right. add these so, powers back and then take out toughness. Like I don't know. Right. So so here here's my take on that mark is you know the part of me the 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 fun of the game is as far as competitive play and play goes is winning and winning prizes, right? That, that feels fun, right? Uh, that feels good. Um, so as long as say the competitive game stays dynamic enough, right? Like to where we're complaining about vulture and, you know, or we're talking about tent poles and as long as that stays variety, um, I think I will maintain interest, right? Um, and, uh, you know, so like the willpower thing is more of a vast change, right? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm a little bit alarmed at the value for a brick or a case um, with the lower level stuff not being as crazy good. Um I don't know, Mark. So I think maybe I would ask that question again after we see the Wonder Woman dials um, and all these other things they have promised to replace it with, right? So uh, I'm at least staying uh, uh, optimistic until we see the dials. And I just saw Corey commented, LOL, Vulture is still a thing. Yeah, <laughs> Corey, he's, a, Corey he's, a, he's definitely a, a thing uh, for every one of our competitive events. Yeah, for me, Mark, real quick, it's going to be if a third set is still not having these in there. And or if we get Con LEs that do this. Oh, yeah. See, that would be that. Yeah, there you go. That's alarming. Now, if there was like one or like one Con LE that did this, like it's a beginner Con LE, 
that's okay, like, as long as the rest do it. Like, I can understand that, like, hey, beginners, here's a cool OP Khan Ali we're sending to your stores. Win it. Like, that's okay. Like, I, I get that. And if we get another set beyond Wonder Woman that is a Marvel set that does this, that, I am expecting that, honestly, because that makes sense. Dip into both your main licenses, DC, Marvel, easier sets, sure. I hope they're not back-to-back, because -back, that's a bummer for us, but... That wouldn't surprise me if it's two sets, but if we're getting into set three, a second Marvel set where they're just going to continue to do this path, then I'll start getting a little bit concerned. Then I'll be saying, okay, hold on. Like, are you going through all of your Marvel properties and doing this? Like, to me, it makes sense to have a DC Marvel set just continually, continually being beginner. Um, but who knows? There's a there's a lot of news with a lot of info we still need. That's the key thing. Yeah. And the key thing is what the slide says. R-E-L-A-X. Relax. It's not the end of the yeah. world. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, like the, I like the idea there. Relax until we have something crazier. We still got two days, man. We got two more days. Did they say did they say four articles or did they have they said how many articles? I am assuming it's the rest of the week because we've gotten one every single day. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. There might be some next week. They may not even have one tomorrow. Oh, that's true. They might have some next week. But considering we've gotten one Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it makes sense uh, to we, get one. Do we get? We do we get one Monday? We got the zero one, the article zero where they're talking about the sets uh, were going to be lighter and. You know, we're we're tailoring the commons and uncommons to be Oh yeah, that's right. So we got the we got the preview for this week on Monday. Right, right. and we weren't expecting the the bomb to drop from yesterday. Yeah, we <laughs> and then we right. got a second so, bomb. So So now we are expecting Thursday and Friday to be wild. Right. Because re keep in mind this one thing wasn't really a rules. It was purely design. So we've only had one article explaining rules changes. <laughs> And we're yeah. expecting more rules changes, so wouldn't surprise me Thursday, Friday to be a tomorrow to be a bigger thing. We'll probably do another video tomorrow if it's a big deal. So, um, so thank you guys for watching, everybody that's watching the stream. Hopefully, uh, we're gonna put this on YouTube if I can get the video. Uh, we'll keep posting these live videos every night whenever one of these big rules articles come out. Doesn't mean we're not gonna do podcast episodes, but we'd like to help temper the community because it feels like it's a lot of negativity from the competitive scene especially after today and that's why it's like hey guys just relax one this doesn't happen till may we still got future foundation but i and like mark says thanks for replies and optimism i am a very optimistic guy and it's very um annoying to some people but i am very optimistic on how this is going so <laughs> and and new and I will say this new podcast tomorrow. I've I've got time to make it happen tomorrow. Sweet. It seems like a trivial thing to edit the episode pretty quickly and get it uploaded, but you know I like to maintain a a good you know thirty minutes of focus on it to get it done right every time. So um, I have that time allotted tomorrow. Excellent. Well, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching here, Dan. Do you want to do your outro? Your your better oh, yeah, than hey. I am. It's all good. Thanks everybody for watching tonight. Uh, we'll talk to y'all next time. Thanks for uh, thanks for being a part of our community. See you guys.